from the fair. As teenagers braved the rickety roller coasters. Sick with the stench of donuts and chips. The sharp-eyed seagulls circled for scraps as night came down. And electric lights hung like jewels humming along the front. By day, the beach was packed. Deck chairs and rugs and tea in borrowed bone china. Charabanks and trains spilling out more and more. Kids made to memorise the number. Thick wipes against gravel. Still, the tannoys echoed and crackled with lost ones' names. Some got an ice cream. Others, a slap on the back of the legs. And then journey from the island, past the scraps and rust of redundant steam trains, stood silent and still in Woodham's yard. Over to the bars, through the tight turnstile, where towels kissed the green slopes. Oxo crisps and scalding pasties were devoured, then dive into the water. Oh, how the ice chill took your breath. At Bindles, Bird Miller and his band played on stage while couples spun light-footed swans on sprung floor. At the Mount Sorrel, families gathered in best hats bought at Dan Evans, toasting to the happy couple and wetting the baby's head. Caught in photos later mocked, what were you wearing? On Holton Road, you had the busy milk bars, the neat grocers, the raw butchers, and the fancy department stores. The proud town hall in Edwardian Baroque, the seated lions and subterranean sparkling toilets, the square thronged at New Year and on Carnival Day to Romilly Park for the horse and flower show with bright blooms. Oh, the sweet scent of warm grass in the tent. And for weeks after, the outline, a ghost of yellow grass. Yes, I remember it all. When we were kids, you just go into everyone's houses. Mm. None of the doors were locked. Well, you just literally go in, call for your friends, go out, spend the whole day together, just out playing. We didn't have electronics back then. We'd be making our own games. You know, we'd be making curbsy. There wasn't much traffic going through the roads. The roads were actually wider back in the day. They narrowed them since. The cars come through, well, they go through too fast. But we'd be out playing curbsy with our neighbors and our friends till, 11, 12 o'clock at night, because our parents knew who we would be with. We'd be playing hide and seek, we'd be jumping over people's edges, but everyone knew us in the area because it was such a friendly community. Your mum and dad would be over the neighbours, sat on the doorstep, having a cup of tea, and you'd be running around the streets, but safely, you know. If we were going out on our bikes, we'd pack our jam sandwiches and our bottle squash into a carrier bag, couldn't afford rucksacks, but we made sure we were out first thing in the morning. We didn't even have keys to the house back in the day. Our parents wouldn't give us keys. But you know, they'd say, be in before dark. And well, you best be in before dark, otherwise you're, you're in, in for it. it. Yeah. In for it. Yeah. yeah. It was just a friendly community. You become a family member to all your friends. Because your friends lived across the road. You had Auntie Philip and Uncle John. Even though they weren't related whatsoever, I was called Little Die, you know. We were like brothers and sisters. If you're going down Porth Kerry for a picnic, you'd all go together. All their family 
included us. Well, it was just a sense of family with everyone. Born on Barry Island, I was, and it was close knit. I went to the island school and liked it. Apart from the toilets that were in the yard, whoa, freeze you to death. My earliest memory, the Queen's coronation. Mum handmade me and my sister beautiful golden dresses and we had neat ribbons in our hair. I cried when a boy dressed like a cowboy won a prize. What's he got to do with the coronation, I thought, when I was dressed like the Queen? Dad was a police sergeant and I grew up in the big police station and house on Ship Hill, near the Ship Hotel. It was a beautiful place. I never feared the men locked in the cells because they were separate. Once a fella sang all weekend. We could hear his voice through our walls. <laughs> we knew it had too much to drink. I could walk everywhere as a kid, swimming, Romley Park or the island have a couple of hours on the fair, or the slots, and then go to the roller skating rink above the shops on the front. My brother was a great skater. Me, ha, huh, I was clumsy. As a teen, it was great. Having a coffee in 40s and sitting in a booth made me feel like a real grown-up. My brother was in a band called The Strollers. Barry's very own Beatles, with matching jackets and matching hair. They practised in our garage, because it had been bomb-proofed in the war for the police cars. They played all over. But my dad, being an officer, didn't approve of them playing venues like the Pelican on the island. My brother's still friends with the fellas from the band, the ones who are still alive. There's still that connection. That's Barry for you. I spent years working at Dan Evans, dressing the windows, latest fashions, homewares, and at Christmas, displays of cocktail dresses and children's pajamas under coloured baubles. I didn't like working in the china department, mind. Bag of nerves. I smashed a casserole dish once. Butterfingers. I miss Halton Road being like that. Still, we're lucky with the Knapp, Porth Kerry and Barry Island. I still love the island. Number three! Number three! Number three! You have to find the numbers on the walls, or you'll get lost. Yeah, I go out and see. Look at the beach. Go back to where everyone is sat and realise I've got no idea where anybody is. I go with my nans because she lives on the island, and then we go to the beach and we bring my dog. It's amazing there on a sunny day. Everybody knows everybody on the island. Oi, sand crab. Sand crab? Yeah, sand crab. That's what they call the islanders. My favourite food place on Barry Island is the place where they do the massive pancakes. I love the fish and chips, I do. Give me an ice cream any day. I think what they've done with Barry Island Seafood is fantastic. Fabulous. Living on a beach, my office. It's a lifestyle, it's amazing. You've got the waves, the surf, it's a wonderful life. The people you meet down the island, they come from everywhere. 10 coaches every day for six weeks. Asian families from the Midlands, they park up the top. You see them all coming down about 10 o'clock. And I'm like, here we go. It's gonna get busy now, I think. 
Oh, but it's wicked. Some bring big barbecues, everyone brings food, and of course I gotta go down and check it out, haven't I? So I go over, I'm like, all right guys, everyone, I'm the lifeguard if you need anything. And there you go. Do you want any food? Ah, go on then. <laughs> and they'll have this incredible food, or curries and stuff like that. It's gorgeous, proper gorgeous. I don't know what I'm doing. Come rain or shine, it could be hammering down with rain, but they don't care. They're having fun. We're going in the sea. They're all dressed up, just in the sea. No bathers, just in their clothes. And then they come up to you, semi-hypothermic, needing medical help. Well, look at the weather. It is Wales, you know. The air smells different down the island, where there's like rain, sandstorms and fog. And there you go. We're here, we're on the beach, and we're gonna enjoy ourselves. Safe beach? Yeah. Safe beach, safe as can be, yeah, yeah, it is. You know there's strong currents in there? Yeah, because down here, we've got a second highest tidal range in the world. See, down Barry, you've got a two points. So as the tide comes in, it hits Nels, comes down, and then a current comes across the beach, hits Friars, and then straight out to sea. People do get caught in the currents, though, and we got to paddle out to go and get them. Hey, one funny story springs to mind. There was these three boys jumped in this, like, oh, it's like a big, square, inflatable armchair sort of thing, and the tide was going out. We're sat there, we're watching it, drifting out, and I'm like, to go in and get them now, aren't I? They're getting closer to Friars Point, so I paddles out. But by the time I get there, they've gone round the corner to watch Tower Bay, and they're going out to sea. So I paddles up to them, and they sat there with cans and fags. All right! I'm like, oh, where are you from? Newport! Listen, boys, let's get you in. We're miles out to sea. They're gonna call a lifeboat out. Yeah, yeah, you know, we'll be all right. Hey. I'm gonna paddle you back in. So I get him in to watch Tower Bay, and I thought that was it. I thought that was the end of them. So the tide's still going out, and I'm packing up the beach two hours later. But against the tidal currents, these boys start appearing around the headland, leaning over the side, paddling back in, absolutely smashed out of their skulls. Triathletes, triathletes. These guys can't even battle the currents, but these boys rock up, and a rule book goes out the window. But yeah, man, loves the beach, it's my office. I was the first female taxi driver in Barry. Growing up, oh, playing marbles in the gutter with the boys, round the lamppost on a rope, always playing with the boys. Then one bonfire night, I was 13. Bonfires on our side, and they had theirs over there. We kept an eye on them, because they was always pinching our wood for theirs. All of a sudden, Big explosion. Oh, that was the biggest bang that we'd ever heard. Ambulances and police down Travis Street. Four boys had found a grenade down the docks and they were throwing it round like a ball. And then boom! One lost his chest. He lost all his chest. One lost his leg and his brother got killed. We used to have a lot of ammunition brought into Barry Doxy. That was a bad day. That was a tragedy. But then there was the domino club. Cooking, sewing and stuff. Activities for the boys. Oh, there was activities every night. Soon as it opened, in we went until it was time to get home before it got dark. It was only round the corner, see, the domino club. It was on Thompson Street. And they organised things for underprivileged kids. Plays carnivals, took us over Porth Kerry on the weekends. Oh, and we went on holiday over Somerset, went on the train. My mother was always waiting on Barry Dock Station for us all to come back. <laughs> we had holiday every year, had to pay a little towards it. Went there till I was 15, because then we started work. 
My mother was born in Thompson Street, then lived on Travis Street. And then when I got married, I had a beautiful house on Thompson Street. But then they was all knocked down. We lost all that community then, see? <laughs> I wanted to go up to the grammar school, but my mother said, huh, don't bother taking the test, love, because when you leave school, you'll be working. So I was a machinist in the silk factory. Sidroy Mills, owned by Mr. Feltz. Oh, his daughter is Vanessa Feltz. Then I moved on. Must have had 12 jobs after that. I've been everywhere. There was that many jobs around in those days. You could go from one job to another, see? Down the enamel works on the dock, dipping mugs and cups into enamel and then into the furnace. Oh, it was rough, but it was a lovely job, see? It was the people. They were older and, and they mothered you. Only 20 minutes walk from home. Oh yeah, it was dangerous near the furnaces. Dangerous for the men, yeah. But then I started work in the petrol station, serving petrol. The owner asked me to taxi for him. And that's how I became the first female taxi driver in Barry. <laughs> the seamen were the best. Always gave you a good tip. You just took him to the ship and that was it. It was safe, yeah. I'm Brian, I'm 75. Born in George Street, number 20, 1946. Main memory, Dockview Road, dock full of ships, everybody really busy. Oh, the dock copper. Hmm. The sound of coal going into the ship's hold. Empty trains, steam and smoke in the air and getting trapped under the tunnel. Summer months at Jackson's Bay. Walking, wonderful. <laughs> Swimming at regattas. Camping at Port Kerry, making bows and arrows. Trips on the flower truck. What a lovely man. Half a dozen of us kids amongst the sacks. He'd take us all around Barry. Absolute joy. Memories of winter and carol singing down Woodlands Road. Summer swimming in the pool when we had the money or Jackson's Bay, which cost nothing. Age 10, worked for Ray Baker, the grocer. Then the butchers in High Street. Then in Barry Island, peeling tons of spuds for the Merry Friars. At school, my old teacher, Vic Evans, ex-army, slow march across the school. <laughs> I was inspired by his tales of times abroad. I joined the Sea Cadets. Navy at 15 and saw the world. Ashore in Mombasa, the sights and smells, just as Vic Evans had described them. Unbelievably real met local people at all the different ports. Mentioned Barry, named the chain locker, well, it was known across the oceans. Only captains, chief engineers and their families were allowed to stop in the hotel. But many a sailor made the bar their first stop, and their last, sozzled, <laughs> before going back to the ship. I served 12 years, met my lovely wife on Nelson's ship, the Victory, in Portsmouth. Then I worked on Barry Dock. I was a stringer. Pallets of bananas and tarantulas. Amazing sights. Wonderful experiences. Now I look back.
On my dad's side, my grandmother, she was a dancer back in the day with her sister, my auntie Barbara, and they danced on the London stage at the Palladium, you know, the Tiller Girls, that sort of thing. And then the sisters came to Barry and they met two brothers and they married the two brothers. They lived on the same street and stayed close. My mum was engaged to a Dutch sea captain off one of the ships. But one night she went to the Colcott Arms and she met my dad. Love at first sight. She said, That's the man I'm going to marry. I wrote a letter of apology to the sea captain and the rest is history. Growing up, I went to the Caddickston School. Then I passed the 11 plus. I can picture myself now. There wasn't enough room for me in the grammar school. So I had to wait a year. So there I was a year with the girls in the other school. I formed friendships, I was happy. But then I had to go to the grammar school. And it was such a change, you know, so strict. My mum bought me tennis equipment, tennis kits, French books, everything. I was crying, I just didn't want to go. I was so miserable. But in the end, they let me go back to my friends. When I left, I had a few different jobs. Then I had a family, and then I went back to work. I settled at the Mount Sorrel Hotel. My first memory of the Mount Sorrel would be my sister getting married there. And it was more Art Deco then, if you know what I mean. Tiles on the floor and basket chairs, an Art Deco entrance. Now it's had a refurb, but it's still a hub for the people of Barry. Weddings and baby showers, I'm proud to be there. Oh, I love it in Barry. There's all these connections. Yeah, it's got a lovely atmosphere, yeah. I just love this place. We've got a community, brings people together. Oh, we're very blessed. So much on our doorstep. Beautiful places on our doorstep. Yeah, we're spoiled for choice. The Golden Stairs. Millwoods. Pebble Beach. Bromley Park. Jackson's Bay, our best kept secret. <laughs> Glastonbury. Barry Bados. Do you know, I got all the way to Bondi Beach and I thought, gee whiz, it's just like Barry Island, yeah? <laughs> and even our toilets are grade two listed. <laughs> yeah. I've lived here all my life. Sometimes I just get the pram, get the dogs and walk for miles. Do you know, there's nowhere I'd rather live than Barry. Barry. Big history. Big heart. Big hopes. <laughs>